back here on the program. Uh, he does um, uh, analysis in the studio for the Yes Network, Brooklyn Nets. He's on Sirius XM Radio as well. Long time um, a guest on this program on the Mercedes-Benz fans phone line back from the city of New York, Frank Isola. How you doing, Frank? Rich, I'm really good. And, you know, one of the perks of being a guy is that we're kind of allowed to wear the same thing, you know, back-to-back days. <laughs> okay. I think, I think I get accused of that as well. Okay. I you know, uh, but uh, but you strike me as somebody who's got fashion sense, though, Frank. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, a little bit. I probably should have more. Okay. You know, so I'm not, I'm not exactly House of Gucci, put it that way. Ah, uh, very good. Let's just jump right into this here with yesterday's news. Where did the firing of Steve Nash come from, Frank? I, I mean, I, I think it's – hard not to believe that it really started or the clock started ticking on Steve Nash once a report came out that Kevin Durant had, you know, kind of made an ultimatum, either the coach and the GM go or I go, and I understand that they all ended up staying. But once you say something like that, it certainly puts it out there. You know, they, they were 2-5 and five under Steve, and Saturday night against Indiana, they had a really poor performance, their worst performance of the season. I heard that Steve kind of got into it with the play, you know, really reamed them out afterwards. That includes Kevin Durant, and they responded on Monday night with a, with a very good performance against the Indiana Pacers. So I think from that standpoint, you know, this whole losing the locker room, I, I'm not buying any of that nonsense. But I think it's uh, you know a lot to just what they've done ever since Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving arrived there. It's trying to do everything they can to keep them happy and trying to salvage you know what remains of this run that they're going to have together. And, and um, is it true, based on your knowledge, reporting, or whatever you can share, that, that the Nets did this with Ime Udoka from Boston or soon to be formerly of Boston or whatever is suspended by Boston. Let's let's call what the current situation status is with him in mind to be the, the full time coach of the Brooklyn Nets. I, I would think absolutely. And, you know, the, the one thing you know, there are coaches out there like Quinn Snyder, a lot of coaches don't like to take over you know, coaches of a certain caliber don't like to take over. You know, in the uh, you know a season to start or the middle of a season, I think the situation with Ime Adoke is different right now. He's currently suspended by the Boston Celtics, and I'm um, assuming he has you know the leeway and you know the permission to just start his job at the Brooklyn Nets. Remember, too, he did spend a year there as an assistant coach um, under Steve Nash. So he knows Kevin Durant, knows Kyrie Irving, knows what he's walking into. You also have that San Antonio Spurs connection with Sean Marks and Ime Adoke. So. I would think that has a lot to do with it. And maybe the, the, maybe the moment that Ime Adoka was suspended, maybe that's something the Nets were thinking about as well. Because you can't tell me that this is all happening within the last 24 to 36 hours. They decide to fire Steve Nash and Ime Adoka's in mind like that. I would think that the wheels on something like this would certainly have to be turning for a while now. Maybe, maybe it's as recently as Saturday, but it could have been before that. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. So the question I have on that front is... Um, what vetting can the Nets share with us once this does happen? Uh, yeah. Based on – because it's it's not just any coach. You're getting the coach within the division from the defending Eastern Conference champions who decided to – that whatever happened was so egregious they would suspend him for an entire year and now allow him to walk within division to the Nets – uh, a talented roster for no compensation? Like, what is, what's yeah. up with that, Frank? Yeah, and I think, you know, and I know you've addressed this before with the whole Kyrie Irving situation, mm-hmm. so there are people upset about that and kind of the way that it's being handled. And now you're going to get a whole new group of people, or maybe, you know, some of the same people, and rightfully so, are going to be questioning, what the heck is going on here? You're bringing this guy in. The meeting with uh, Ime Adoka and Human Resources with the Nets, I think that's going to be pretty interesting. But also, there's going to come a po- there's also going to come a point, Rich. And remember, this hasn't happened yet mm. with Ime Adoka. He was suspended and left. I understand, I, you know, if my memory serves me correctly, he did release a statement, but he hasn't sat down and spoken to the media. And I would think when he has his press conference, that's going to be, uh, you know, that, that's going to be a tricky situation for the Nets and Ime Adoka to navigate because I'm not so sure there's really going to be any right answers or answers that are really going to satisfy everyone because it, it's really something unprecedented. We really haven't seen this ever before because I think it's only been about 31 or 32 days since the initial suspension was handed down. It looks like he, who knows, he could be coaching the team as early as Friday night. Wow. Frank Isola here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Well, look, uh, if Udoka is brought in as a coach and can start coaching this team as early as Friday night, and you just said, boy, his press conference is going to be something else when he finally has it, 
um, that means that they won't be handling the Nets, uh, that situation in the way that they're currently handling Kyrie Irving's, which is uh, allowing him not to speak, despite it being uh, against the rules, I guess, of the collective bargaining agreement and player contracts in the NBA. What What is the current status of, of the Nets and Kyrie Irving that you can share yeah, with us, and I, Frank? And I, and I think, too, I, you know, and I know, and rightfully so, you've been critical of it. I think the guys on TNT were critical of it. Us on the Yes Network, we were critical of Kyrie Irving. Maybe all that stuff is really starting to weigh on him now because, you know, Kyrie, for all this nonsense that's happened over the past five days, has actually played really well up until last night. He wasn't uh, the same player. He looked really detached. He didn't score until the fourth quarter. I think he finished 2 for 12, 0 for 6 on three-pointers. So I don't really know where this where this story is going to go from here. You know, the, the one thing, too, you know, that press conference that Kyrie did have after the game on Saturday night clearly went off the rails, and it wasn't a good look for him, not a good look for the Nets. And I think the Nets are probably kind of saving Kyrie from himself. Now, he did take down the post, which you know, he made it sound like originally that he wasn't going to do something like that. I still don't understand why he just doesn't come out and say something along the lines of, you know, I was told about this documentary. There were some things that interested that I found interesting. I had no idea. Well, I think the problem is, Frank, is that he he does have an idea. That's the issue, is he does have an idea, and he does believe it. And if there's anything that Kyrie has shown um, amongst many, uh, by the way, terrific attributes uh, uh, otherwise in in other parts of his world, uh, of his deep thinking for him in free-thinking world, um, is that he believes what he believes and he stands by it, that that he believes – so what what was put out there in the same way that he told, you know, uh, was it Nick Fr- Friedel of, of Friedel, ESPN? Friedel, yeah. That he said to him that he, that what Alex Jones had said about uh, cabals and, and secret societies was true, that he believes it. And that's why the Nets are keeping him away, because he will not go out and say that he doesn't believe it, which is, you know, not I, I could say it's fine. It's fine because he believes that. But it's not fine because of what he believes and how how much of an influencer he is and how terribly disappointing it is and frightening, Frank. You know, and yeah, I, yeah. And at first he said, "I'm an influence." You know, I do have influence. And he then does. He Why do you guys in the media keep saying that I have influence? And I thought when you know when Nick was trying to go was explain like what are the parts here that you believe? Then all of a sudden Kyrie didn't want to get into that discussion, which leads me to believe he really doesn't understand some it doesn't clearly understand how hurtful it is and you know this because you're from uh new york you know the landscape here you know Kyrie irving's from west orange new jersey Mm -hmm. which is a very diverse city a town i should say with a large uh, jewish community he plays in brooklyn new york for crying out loud and i keep saying it you can't walk five feet in brooklyn without walking past a church a synagogue a mosque obviously a huge jewish community there Mm -hmm. um a, a large part of the jewish community is basketball fans fans of Kyrie Irving, fans of the Nets. I just find it hard to believe that he could be so tone deaf and to also say something like, I didn't really hurt anybody. Yeah, you did. What? When you're promoting something which questions the Holocaust and says that 6 million Jews didn't, uh, didn't die in the Holocaust, that, that's going to be really hurtful to, yeah. to a lot of people. And, I, and again, I have a funny feeling, one of the reasons last night, I think really the stress and the pressure is now is getting to him because he has been taking – a lot of heat, and again, rightfully so. I, do, I don't. I don't think that that's something that he should be promoting and getting into this discussion. What's promoting? What's not promoting? I mean, come on, Kyrie. Right? You, you knew what, what you're doing by putting that on your social media account. And again, when he was asked fair questions about it, you know, the one thing about Nick Friedel, Nick is responding to the owner of the team sending out a tweet. Yes. He's responding to the league uh, sending out a statement as it relates to Kyrie Irving. That's all they're asking about. And now here's your platform. To, you know, to explain yourself, and you didn't want to, and now we haven't heard from you since, and we haven't heard from him since the post came down. I could tell you this from from everything that I've heard from people in the network organization. They're disappointed that you know they were encouraged that the media, the social media post came down, but it, you know the fact that he hasn't issued any kind of apology. I think a lot of people are disappointed in that. That's because he believes it, Frank. I mean, that's it. And that's why any, any sessions with the Anti-Defamation League, whatever summit that, that John Marks is setting up to try and cool things off and have a learning process or a teachable moment. Like, I don't, I, I don't think that's going to so what, affect so what, anything. So what, so what should the league do then? That's I don't where, know, man. Myers-Leyard I, was He was fined and, you know, basically kicked out of the league for the nonsense that he said. 
I, I, I don't know where they go from here. I, I, I don't know. Uh, a, a suspension of some sort? I, I, I don't know. And I, 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 I don't have that answer. I don't have it. But uh, I, I do think this, though, and I, I really believe it, and I do hope I, I'm wrong um, about that there's no teachable moment here, Frank Isola. I, I, I would love for Kyrie to be a partner in this. I mean, yeah. he does have such an incredible platform. And so many people who do look up to him in a way that when he talks that people listen and it is compelling. And if he does actually become an advocate for for um, anti-defamation uh, and certainly when it comes to anti-Semitism and speaking out against it and, and talking about the normalization of it being dangerous, he, it would be incredible, just incredible. And I hope well, I hope that happens. It would be amazing. I'd be thrilled. And I, think, and I think to your point, you know, I think Joe Sy, the owner of the Nets, in his tweet said he wanted to have a discussion with Kyrie. Now, as recently as two days ago, maybe that's changed on the last 24, 48 hours. He had not had a discussion with him. And from everything that I've been told, the Anti-Defamation League was hoping to talk to Kyrie, not lecture him. They want to have a discussion yeah. with him. And that hasn't happened yet either. And I think, to your point, I think that's disappointing as well. Frank Isola here on the Rich Eisen Show. Last one for you on this subject matter. What's Durant think of all this? What, 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 well, how, I mean, how's this all landing on Kevin Durant, who's one of the greats of all time, currently as well, wanting to win? He's got four more years left on the contract or three-plus more years left on the contract. How's all this landing on Kevin Durant? Yeah, I, I think that he's probably thinking, I wish a deal could have been made for me this summer, but I – I kind of agree with the Nets. It's one thing to trade them. I don't think the Nets had any problem trading them, but they weren't going to get raked right. over the coals and not get a deal that they thought was favorable to them. I think both sides decided let's get back together. Maybe something could happen at some point this season. Now, if they're bringing in Ime Adoka, they're not bringing Ime Adoka in to rebuild. They're hoping to kind of salvage oh, yeah? Kevin Durant. But again, Rich, it's still you know it's only November second. A lot of things could change between now and when players that signed over the summer are eligible to be traded. So we could all start up again with talk about Phoenix and Miami, you know, maybe even the Golden State Warriors. I don't think that's the end of the story by any, uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Well, because, uh, again, uh, as this keeps going on and longer and longer and we don't hear from other players and, uh, or, and certainly other players in the NBA – uh, who speak out on the subject matter, they're going to end up owning it. And uh, uh, has Durant said anything about Kyrie that, that no, uh, of no? He, he was asked about, I thought he had an unfortunate response. He kind of said, uh, he was asked if it was having an impact on the players in the locker room. He says, not having any impact on us. It's probably having an impact on you guys, which I'm not so sure that was the right statement to give. But Reggie Miller kind of said what you said, uh, what you just said right now. Reggie Miller during the, early in the telecast last night on TNT kind of called out the NBA players for being very outspoken about the situation with Donald Sterling and also Robert Sarver, but remaining quiet here. You know, you know, LeBron did come out as it relates to the situation with Robert Sarver and said, you need to have zero tolerance. But all right, so what is zero tolerance? Because it doesn't seem like that's the case right here as it relates to Kyrie Irving. Okay. I mean, because I think it's being masked by a lot of people as a free speech issue that he should be able yeah, to say what he wants. It's just, no, 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 no. This is not that. It is, nope. it is, it is, sure, he's free to say what he wants, but the consequences must land. You know, that's the way I'm seeing it, but I don't know I the think, way. I think that's the way a lot of people in New York are seeing it. I think that's the way a lot of people that live in the borough of Brooklyn are seeing it. I think that's a lot of people in the organization are seeing it as well. Frank, I really appreciate the two cents and you uh, chopping it up with me. I know it's obviously a very sensitive subject and you're covering the team and you're, you're on the Yes Network and I, I appreciate your time. As always. Thanks, thanks a lot, Rich. Take care. You, you got it. At the Frank Isola on Twitter. Go follow him. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.